Right then, so a very quick overview, and I say very quick because I've done this numerous times before and the microphone has always been shocking. Anyway, this is a RS flip-flop overview. Um, I'm using a site called logic.ly. You probably can't see it under my beautiful boat race, but uh, it's uh, sort of written there. If you put a dot in there, you'll find it. And it's a great way of um, creating logic stuff on your computer. Um, this RS flip-flop, basically the R stands for reset and the S stands for set. And what we're resetting and setting is the value of Q. There's a truth table for it here. Uh, we'll go through that in a second. But essentially, um, turn that off. If I wanted to set the value of Q, I would use the set button. Um, so set is true. That's this one here. Reset is zero, which means Q is equal to one. And there you go. If I turn that off, then what happens is we jump up here and that says no change or the latch position. So that's uh, locked on there and it will stay locked until I reset it. So if I reset it, that means I'm going to turn R to 1, S to 0, which will give me a value of 0 in Q. So let's try that. There we go. Perfect. So an RS flip-flop either sets the value of Q or resets the value of Q. We never use one on one because that's an invalid input. Now, there's a little bit in the middle which is a bit weird. Now, if you have a look, this uh, NOR gate feeds in to the other NOR gate, and this NOR gate feeds in to the first NOR gate. It's all a bit strange. How does it work? How do we know what's going to happen here? I mean, how can we have um, an output when we don't know what both the inputs are. Well, actually you do. If you have a look at the truth table here, um, if both the inputs are zero and zero, then we get a one. Otherwise, if any input is a one, then the output will definitely be zero. So as Q is off at the moment, I'm going to set it. I'm going to click the S button. I click the S button, that gives me a one. Now, I've definitely got one one going in here. Uh, it doesn't matter what the other one is, the output will always be false. So once you know the output's false on this, you can complete the circuit. That's a false output, that gives you a false output here, and a false output in there. Two zeros give you a one, so we can light up Q, and then we can take that one, and we can feed it down there. Two ones give you an output of zero, which ensures that not Q is zero and completes the circuit in there. Nice and easy. Okay, so we turn them both off. We can't make any assumptions from this because um, uh, none of them are definitely one and none of them are definitely not one. So we leave it alone and then we can uh, alter it as we go through R. Basically, I'm going to repeat the same thing here. If we turn on R, that gives us a positive input. Positive input gives us a zero output. Um, we can take that zero output, we can complete the circuit. Here's the zero, lines up here with the other zero. Zero and zero give us a one. That lights up not Q. Feeds back into here, one and one, gives us our uh, false output here, a zero output, a zero output here. Now I've rushed through this, um, but hopefully it's enough just to give you a basic understanding of how this uh, RS flip-flop works and uh, how on earth you work your way around this type of logic. If it works, brilliant. If it doesn't work, we'll go through it a little bit more. Um, 